Hey, welcome or welcome back. You want a theories? Let's talk theories. We're going to look at some today that I, I can get behind. I want these to be true. So we're going to kick off. Oh, oh, oh. We're also going to rank them out of 10 as well on how likely they are to be true. We're going to kick off with Sorella, Alaris, theory, same person. It was the first theory that I came across after reading the books initially. And I was like, oh, damn, that's obvious. It didn't click to me. Doran mentioned Sorella as Oberyn's daughter, a sand snake. I think it's to Ariane not to include her in any, like, plots. She's doing her own thing, leave her be. Alaris is one of the young novices within Marwyn's little group down at the Citadel. You know, the one that's really good at shooting, you know, the arrows and apples. And, um... Yeah, same person. Duh. It was so obvious. I mean, it just didn't click because it just seemed like a random name in passing. But, yeah. Probably true. Why not? She's a female, can't go and study at the Citadel as Sorella. Why not pretend to be a man so you can go and study? Also, maybe wanted to follow in her father's footsteps by going to the Citadel. Maybe doing a little bit of research for Dawn. Who knows? It's a likely theory, though. I would give it a 10 out of 10. Most likely true. The next one I want to go on to is the Gravedigger Hound theory. The Hound, when we last see him, Arya's ditched him. He's basically bleeding out. He's dying. However, we meet a tall, strapping fellow. Well, we don't meet him, but we see him on the quiet aisle when Brienne goes there. And the, is it the, the Septon? He's like, oh yeah, he's he's recently joined us. And there's also that very wild horse in the stables. Obviously stranger. Come on, it must be. I think it's a likely theory. I want the Hound to have another hurrah, so I don't want him to be dead, which he presumably is. I think it's likely that the people from the Quiet Isle would have gone and found him and taken him in and given him that second chance. And he's taken that vow of silence to work on those issues he clearly has. So I think 9 out of 10, true. I'd only dock in a point because I'm like, well, maybe George has got so many ends that he needs to tie up that it's not something that he's going to include. I reckon when the grave digger was mentioned and we see Stranger, that's in his mind. I think 9 out of 10, probably true. The next theory I want to look at is the Missande one. Child of the forest, maybe? I wish it was true. It's probably not. So Missande is a young girl, knows many languages, joined Daenerys' crew with the Unsullied. She is her advisor, translator, friend. She's a young girl, very, very smart and wise. She's described as having this, like, beautiful skin, these wide eyes, supposedly from Narf. Maybe she's resided there as a child of the forest. If It's not unlikely that a child would learn all these languages. It's easy to pick up when you're younger, I suppose. So maybe she could just be a normal person. But... As a child of the forest, she would have had hundreds of years to learn these languages and become so wise. I think it would be a great theory to be true, because I think it would just be good for Daenerys to have someone like that on her council, someone that can advise her on actual history because they've seen it or have the ability to see it. I don't know. I would give it probably a... 2 out of 10 in being true, maybe even lower, because it seems like an extra thing for George to include when he doesn't need to, and we don't really have that many clues. Um, But I like it. I like it. I want it to be true. The last theory we're going to look at is the night lamp theory with Stannis at the Crofter's village just outside Winterfell. So at the end of the Dance with Dragons, and including that Theon sample winter chapter that we have. 
Stannis is in this village. His army, oh my god. It's snowstorms. It's really bad weather there, okay? They are struggling. They have struggled to make any progress. And they are getting desperate for food. They're abandoning him. They're eating people. Eating the other soldiers. Stannis has experienced this at Storm's End when it was under siege. So I would hope he is wary of these things and doesn't want to encourage it but maybe save it as an option should he need it however he does want to burn people Asher's there trying to get Stannis to not burn Theon and maybe just behead him I sacrifice him to the old gods rather than Roar. now the Freys and Mandalays have armies small armies untested men really that have been sent out from Winterfell to go and attack Stannis. The Crofters' village is normally about half a day's ride from Winterfell, I think, but in this weather, I'm sure it's going to take them a bit longer, so Stannis is probably going to have time to make a decision on Theon. The theory is that the Mandalays and Freys will go to attack Stannis. This Crofters' village is... It's, it's hardly a village. It's like a long wall and it's got like a tower on it, I presume. It's surrounded by a lake. The lake is frozen over. There are some holes that have been, you know, used, made and used for fishing. The Freys and Mandalays will approach, see the beacon of lights, the watchtower being used, go across the lake and fall in. Uh, how likely is it? It's kind of likely. Would they know about it? I I don't think they're going to be that wise. I think they would easily fall into the trap. Do I think it's going to happen though? I'm 50-50 on that. Because things that are planned rarely go to plan. So I just feel like there's going to be something that goes wrong. That maybe this... I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to go wrong, but I just feel like it's 50-50 on that. I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. Maybe that's a bit harsh. You let me know what you think. I think that's where we're going to leave it for today. Let me know your thoughts. And don't forget to like the video. Subscribe. Turn on your notifications. Tell me how your day is going. I'll see you next time. Cheerio.